Let me head over to our guest line, bring our next guest on. And uh, he is one of your Carolina Panthers, uh, Frank Alexander. Frank, thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. Thank y'all for having me. How y'all doing today? We're doing great. You know, you're a part of this uh, third annual Ball for a Cause. It's a uh, uh, a basketball event that's being held out at Norman North High School Gym out in Norman, Oklahoma. It's on Friday, to yeah. April the 10th. And this is OU football alumni and NFL guys, it says, who abandoned the turf and hit the hardwoods. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, the game is a basketball game that Corey, you know, he put he put on about three years ago. And, you know, it was it kind of started off uh, just a game for the guys, you know, to come in. It was already coming to the spring game on Saturday. So what Corey did, he just added it to be like a weekend thing with the game on Friday. You know, you go to the game on Saturday night, everybody – I mean, uh, go to the, the spring game on Saturday, and then everybody after the game, you know, kind of goes back to uh, our old stumble grounds of college and hang out. So it's kind of like a reunion-type weekend, you know. And then the cause that uh, Corey, you know, got it going to, I mean, for the game was like a spinal cord research um, cause. That's, who, that's what the cause is going towards. So, you know, now he's – I mean, he's been doing it now for about three years now, so it's starting to take off now. A lot of more people, I mean, a lot, lot more people is uh, finding out about the event. And the the Corey that he's talking about is former Sooner wide receiver Corey Wilson. Uh, he was set to have a breakout spring for uh, UO, and he earned a significant playing time back in '09 and was involved in an accident that uh, left him partially paralyzed, and that's kind of what got this started. <laughs> And it's called Find, right. a, Find a Way Foundation. It's a charitable program of the United Charitable Programs. It's a 501c3 charitable charity. So it's one of those things that's going to go to help a whole lot of folks uh, out there. And it's a it's a great right. event. And I know you're excited to be a part of it. I, I also oh, yeah. want to talk with you about the upcoming season with the Panthers. Oh yeah, man. I'm looking looking forward to it. You know. Uh, I know this year is a big year for me, and, you know, I just uh, want to thank the Panthers and, you know, the whole organization, you know, for sticking out with me, sticking it out with me through the things that I went uh, through last year. And, you know, but I'm just looking forward, man. I'm down here in Houston. I've been down here training since March uh, 3rd, you know, and just been trying to get right, get my body right for this upcoming season, man, because I know, you know, I'm ready to do big things, you know. Frank, this is Marty Herney. It's good to talk to you again. Um, right, what's up, what's up Mr. Marty? How you been? I've been great, man. I've been great. Hope you're doing well. Uh, you How talked you? about last year, Frank, and you know you missed the first 14 games. Um, how how did you keep in football shape, and how did that affect you? And then how does missing those games affect your motivation and drive for this year? Um, you know, just just being out, you know, Mr. Martin, man, it it made me like really find myself, you know, this year and and really figure out, you know, if this is really what I want, you know. And I had a I had a whole year to just, you know, really just sit down and think about how how I want my life to go for the future, you know. And I know the choice that I made was a mindless mistake, you know. And that's why right now I'm just trying to move forward, you know, from this and not, you know. Think about it, you know. So everything I'm doing now, I'm trying to. I learn from their mistake, and I'm trying to progress, you know. So it taught me, you know, just to, you know, you got. If you, in order to get what you want, you got to sacrifice something, you know, and put the priority at the top, you know. And then and football is really, what, really what I want to do. So I got to put away some of the the tiredest things, you know, in order to get where I want to be. And you're a very talented football friend, and you have a very huge opportunity now. Greg Hardy moves on. There's an opening at that starting spot. Talk about how that motivates you and and what you're doing to prepare for that. Uh, it, it, it motivates me uh, because you know every, everybody who comes into the NFL, you know, wants wants to be that starter one day. You know, you know, you know, you're gonna have to go go. Uh, you know, you got to grind through the ranks to get up there. You know, and then I and I was able to able to, to play behind a player like Greg Hardy. You know, and learn some of the things that Greg did, and you know, the things that he helped me out with uh, when I was a rookie. You know, and just playing behind him and CJ. You know, now you know I feel like man, I'm ready to start a whole season now. You know, so 
you know, I, I like I, I wish Green the best, you know, with, with Dallas, and I know Dallas gonna get them a great player, you know, and I know that he's gonna do well, you know. But now I feel like you know now it's my time to go out there and show what I'm capable of doing, you know. Frank, talk about the expectations for this defense. This is a defense that prides itself at, at being one of the best in the league. How do you see you guys moving oh. forward into this season? Uh, this year, I feel like you know, um, you know, we uh most of it, everybody is coming back on the defense, you know, this year. Uh, so you know, like you said, we always try to pride ourselves on going out there and being number one every week. You know, every week we're trying to be strive to be that number one defense. You know, so it just it's just gonna take you know this all season when we all come back together at OTA and everybody just really just buying in to the system, you know, buying into each other, believing in each other, you know, it's all 53 of us, you know, we in this, the coaches, we in this, and everybody buy into that. And I, I, I really feel like, man, we could do some scary things this season, you know, because the talent is there. You know, we got the talent, you know, we got the offense, we got the defense, we got the coaching staff, we got everything we need in Carolina to be, you know, a contender for the uh, Super Bowl, you know, but it's just, you know, everybody has to buy in you know, to that. Frank, what are some of the things you've learned from Charles Johnson as as far as being a pro and, and a defensive mm-hmm. end? The thing I learned from Charles, man, like I, I learned a lot from Charles. Charles like a big like a big brother to me, you know, and then you know, we all we all know the amount of money that Charles makes, you know. But in the midst of Charles making all that money, like Charles is a humble guy. And, you know, he, 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 he taught me that, man, you can have all this money, man, but it don't mean nothing, you know, if you're not happy with it, you know. And so and then you got to do the right things, put yourself in the right situations, put yourself in the right situations with people that are trying to do the same thing as you, you know. So, you know, because you, you want to you wanna progress, so you can't be with nobody that's, you know, going to pull you down, you know. And the thing with Charles, man, you know, Charles always, you know, doing something in his community back in Hawkinsville, or he's doing something in Carolina. You know, he take he, he he takes the D line out, you know, to eat every Friday during the season, you know, and just lit things like that, man. He just, you know, he he give he give back to us, you know. So it ain't like, you know, okay, he I'm I'm Charles Johnson, you supposed to bow down and respect me, you know. Charles give you that same respect, just like you know, man to man, you know. So. Yeah, so I just, you know, Charles, you know, he's he a great, you know, great guy. I just learned a lot from him, you know. Frank, one of the first tapes I watched on you when you were coming out is is against Baylor, and, and you were chasing down RG3 uh, on a regular basis during that game. What is, if you had to pick one um, aspect of your game that you want to work on and improve, what would that be? Uh, Just now, like, I want to, I want to, uh, Work on just my hands, like being better with my my uh my uh technique on my you know pass rush, just the hands, violence with the hands, you know. Want to be more violent with making the move, you know. And that's the thing that I've been working on this uh all all season, being more explosive, you know. In the first step, and you know everything that's that's key. Everything, first step, you know everything, hands, all that, you know. Frank, I know that everybody appreciates your participation in this event. Again, it's the third annual Ball for a Cure. It's at Norman North High School in Norman, Oklahoma. We appreciate what you do and look forward to getting you back on the field next year. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to that as well. And I appreciate you guys for having me on the show today. Frank, thanks, thanks for joining Frank. us. We appreciate it. All right. I have a good one. Thank you. you